Yo, Speed Sport Life, it's Adam, and I'm here with Vaughn Gittin Jr. Dude, we just turned Tokyo Drift from a bad B movie into something real and really cool. No, we did. It was, uh, it's been incredible, hasn't it? And this is your last day here, right? This is my last day uh, with the Mustang. I'm actually going to take two days and just check out Tokyo. I've never been here before, so I'm going to go do some walking around, do a little shopping, check it out. All right. Okay, good stuff. We'll get right into the interview. I think a lot of Americans, at least, American enthusiasts might take the Mustang for granted. I think nowhere, in the, nowhere else in the world can you get so much power, you know, for such little money. How have the Japanese reacted to the Mustang? Uh, it, it's been incredible, right? You know, here's uh, these guys who have full range of cars that a lot of us enthusiasts dream of having. Skyline, Sylvia's, you know, Evos, generations of Evos, generations of Impreza's, and uh, you know, here we are bringing our history, our the Mustang, you know, which is an icon in America, and giving them the opportunity to drive it. And every single one person that got out of the car had a smile on their face, whether they were just allowed, whether they just sat in the car and hit the gas a couple times, or whether they were like Kumakubo or Kaguchi who went out and drove the car. I mean, Kumakubo got out and couldn't believe that the 550 horsepower car that we have here, sure, you can buy with a manufacturer warranty for 40 grand. He said, I want one. He, he, he was like, I'm thinking about, I'm not, you know what, I'm going to sell my Skyline and buy one. And to me, that's just incredible, you know, and, and the thing is, I always tell everyone, you know, it is Ford's motto, drive one, but really, you don't understand a Mustang until you drive one. All right, well, good. Uh, from a driftability standpoint, how does the 2010 Mustang compare to the previous generation? Well, I think that, uh, you know, the car is uh, the same chassis, right? Uh, and the things that they've done to enhance the suspension and give the car more power only makes it better. Sure. Um, you know, and I think that you saw that, you know, at Evisu the last two days of us just tearing it up with some of the best cars out there. All right. Was there a single toughest part of drifting that was tough for you to master? Did you have to work on it to perfect it? Yeah, I mean, you know, drifting is commitment. Um, you know, there's obviously a lot of skill involved, but it's confidence and commitment in your ability. And the hardest part to master is still putting the tail end on those walls. You know, you're, you know, you got this much, right, to make or break. You touch it too hard, you're putting your front end in, you skim it a little bit, it's great. And, you know, but throwing a car at 80 miles an hour at a wall, sure, there's still always a little factor yeah. to that. And, and you know, I know that it's the same chassis, but have the dimensions of the Mustang changed at all? I actually don't know. No, the chassis is exactly the same. You know, the lines that they put in the car makes it a lot meaner and leaner looking. So it looks like it's a lot thinner, it looks like it's a lot shorter, but exact same wheelbase, exact same track width. You know, I think that this model, they spent so much time on making the interior something that you would expect in only the finest luxury cars and you know the enhancements they made with the suspension and the brakes and the engine is really noticeable well it's good that you don't have to recalibrate yourself you know because we are talking about just a couple of centimeters away from the wall you know the 2010 is not different then right yeah i mean you know it definitely gives me an advantage from a competition standpoint because i'm not reinventing the wheel you know a lot of my competitors are coming out with brand new cars and we still have all the development uh, data that we've used over the last five years and, and obtained over the five years to just bring out this new car. Uh, our new car is a lot lighter, a little more horsepower, but again, not reinventing the wheel, which is a huge thing in competition. So how do you perfect your craft between events? This is going to be pretty funny, but I'm a, I'm a sim nerd. Um, I, yeah, I, uh, that's good. I'm into uh, video games and real life sims. Um, what do you like? Uh, I like uh, Richard Burns Rally. I like uh, Live for Speed. Live for Speed's cool. Yep. Yeah. Um, those are the two that I, I mainly play. And years ago, before I got into real sims, I uh, built this my own drift simulator off of Gran Turismo 3. So, you know, I find that. It's a cheap, affordable way of, and you know, not abusive on equipment to go out there, keep the hand-eye coordination up the par, and uh, you know, really, virtually, uh, you know, get some get some skills and keep stay up on that level. You know, 
hand-eye coordination is the biggest thing, and you know, having having strong eyes and fast eyes and knowing where to look, it all translates to the real track. So you mentioned Richard Burns Rally. Are you ready to branch into other forms of racing? Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, you know, drifting is my heart. It's my passion. Um, I had the opportunity this past year to run Mustang Challenge, do some road racing. I did uh, teamed up with uh, my friend Ken Block and, and drove his uh, rally car and did some dirt track oval racing. So anything I get the opportunity to, to try my foot at, you know, I'm all about it. And uh, rally is the best of both worlds for me. You know, I come from motocross background. So rally is not only jumping in dirt, but it's also drifting. And it's uh, it's incredible sport. And, and those drivers out there are hats off to them because they're badass. What can you tell me about Falcon's dedication to the sport? Well, you know, uh, Falcon Tire has been involved in drifting uh, since it came to the States. In fact, they brought uh, uh, Kaguchi and uh, Sego Yamamoto over in 2003 and did an exhibition. And they are a huge part of why drifting is as successful in America uh, as it is right now and as it will be in the future. You know, they they are dedicated to it and they're going to be here for a while. You know, they have a great product. You know, I've been running on their tires for going on six years now. And uh, if there's one thing that people know about me is, you know, the people that I work with have great products and you know, Falcon is, is no different in that, you know, anyone that runs on their tires doesn't want anything else. Oh, sure. No, I run 615s on my car. Oh, you have one? Yeah. They're yeah. sick, dude. Have you seen you've seen on, on video before? What was it like crossing into the gate for the first time? And <laughs> the videos that all of us have seen of Ebisu just do no justice to what that place is. It is, I mean, you come in, you go through a safari to go up to have your choice of nine circuits to drive. I mean, we're passing, you know, lions and pandas, right? To go up to this mecca of drifting. And it was just, you can't explain it, but for me, it was just pure joy and just amazement. I mean, they built their dream. And, and they share it with anyone that wants to come experience it, and it just doesn't get any better. And you met Tsuchiya the other day, too. Yeah, I met uh, Keiichi Tsuchiya, and, and we went and did uh, some driving at YZ Circuit, and uh, he was, uh, he's a cool guy. I mean, we've met a couple times, I've never been able, you know, we had dinner the night before, and never, we're always so busy when we're in the same area, it's always a competition, and so it was, it was really cool hanging out with him, and, and he's, uh, Definitely said some uh, flattering things that uh, really made me happy. Well, how big is your following here at Japan? You know, I was really surprised uh, that, you know, they have these hats that say I'm big in Japan. But I'm, I'm pretty surprised, you know, at Ebisu I had a bunch of people coming up and recognizing me. But I think the biggest impact that I had from, from a fan was this little four-year-old came up and just, he made like this song for me and he was singing this song. And he was like, Bon Giton, Bon Giton, Bon Giton. And it was the cutest thing. I almost cried, seriously. It was just unbelievable. And, uh, you know, there's was, there was huge respect from, from the people, you know, whether it was when we were out checking out the street scene or we were out at Ebisu or Bioku from the, the other drifters as well as just spectators. It was really, really cool the way that they, the warm welcome I received as well as the new Mustang. So what's next for Captain Clutch King? <laughs> um, well, I, you know, I'm gonna enjoy a couple of days in Tokyo and we have uh, a lot of testing to do when we get back to the new Mustang. Our new car is all dry carbon, 2,500 pounds, 700 horsepower. It's 2,500 pound Mustang. It's it's unbelievable. Oh guys at ASD and Falcon Tire and Ford Racing just came together and just built me this machine. So I'm just looking forward to getting behind the wheel, getting the car dialed in and, and showing up at Long Beach come April and uh, starting out the season right at Formula D. All right, well, you got to get out of here. I'm holding you up. Thank you, Vaughn. Thank you very Appreciate much. Appreciate it. Hey, y'all.